We would like to welcome those who just watched the Heidelberg Student Princes defeat the Wheaton Thunder in the consolation game. Now it's the Lee Fun Classic Championship between the Alma Scots and the Piedmont Lions. Before we preview the teams, we'll take it down to the floor for the scene of the national anthem and the reading of the starting lineup. Piedmont University. And now would everyone please rise for the playing of the national anthem. And now the starting lineups. First for the visitors on the scoreboard from Alma College. At guard, a 6'1 senior out of Landover. That's number one, Tyshawn Walker. At guard, a 6'3 junior out of Lancaster. Number two, Nolan Boffman. At guard, a 6'3 senior out of Blanchard. That's 23, Connor Riley. At center, a 6'7 senior out of Lapeer, Michigan. Number 32, Colton Meister. And at forward, a 6'2", senior out of Almont, number 34, Gabe Bardot. Alma is coached by Mike Fitzpatrick, who's assisted by Brandon Staley, Darian Burse, and Cam Sutherland. And now the starting lineup for the home team from Piedmont. A 6'7", forward, the senior, number one, Joe Hellenbrook. At guard, a 6'1", senior out of Lake Mary, that's number four, Noah Reardon. At guard, a 6'3", a grad student out of Martinez, Georgia, number five, Ryan Jolly. Jolly. At guard, a 6'3", sophomore out of Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, number 30, Fisher Darden. And at forward, a 6'2", senior out of Charleston, 31, Devin Dean. Piedmont's coached by Greg Neely, who's assisted by J.C. Kevin. We would like to welcome those for this Lee Fun Championship game between the Alma Scots and the Piedmont Lions. And Dominic, obviously this is not the NCAA tournament, but there is some value to winning an in-season tournament here in Division Three. Absolutely. It can grow a team's confidence going into their conference play beforehand. And obviously these two teams, Alma and Piedmont, both of them showing really strong games in their previous two with Piedmont absolutely dominating Wheaton while the Scots pulling off a last second victory against Heidelberg. So winning an in-season tournament, while obviously it's not the hardware that you want, definitely boosts a team's confidence heading into that conference play. Holland enters this season three and one. Of course, 
They defeated Heidelberg in their last matchup. The Piedmont Lions, as you stated, destroyed the Thunder. And we'll have the start of this matchup after these messages and a word from the Wheaton Thunder Sports Network. Humble leaders, adventurous thinkers, faithful believers. For Christ and his kingdom, Wheaton stands at the forefront of Christian liberal arts education. Here, we facilitate an unparalleled journey for our students, bringing together deep faith and intelligence to pursue their most ambitious callings. At Wheaton, Reaching God-given potential is never accomplished alone. From coaches on the field to professors in the classroom, we come together to make space for students to wrestle with timeless questions and pursue biblically informed, thoughtful wisdom as they pursue academic, artistic, and athletic excellence. We are one of the nation's colleges that change lives because that is exactly what we do. We live, work, serve, and worship together as an educational community centered on Jesus and reflecting the beautiful diversity of his kingdom. It's collaborative, immersive, Christ-centered. Our enduring model with twin traditions of quality academics and deep faith, along with a faculty of Christian thought leaders and a staff of dedicated believers, allows us to champion the true essence of the Christian liberal arts educational experience. Continuing the legacy lived out by iconic thinkers and evangelical luminaries around the globe, Wheaton integrates and connects disciplines through Christian thought, diverse peers, and contemporary global context. Here, adventurous thinkers and faithful believers come together to create a mosaic of diverse backgrounds, beliefs, and hopes. It's a place of curiosity and conviction, a place to live out your values and pursue your ambitions. Except here, it's not only about what you can achieve, it's about who you can become. Living out our calling with heart and skill through Christ-centered leadership. At Wheaton, you don't have to settle. We call ourselves Thunder because, like Thunder, the Wheaton Network is a force moving through him and for him to build the church and benefit society worldwide. Like rolling thunder, God's mighty voice calls us to be humble leaders, adventurous thinkers, and faithful believers for Christ and His kingdom. And welcome back to King Arena here for the Lee Fun Classic Championship game between the Alma Scots and the Piedmont Lions. Both teams taking care of their opponents last night, and we should be in for a really good matchup, Dominic. Absolutely. So far, we've seen these two teams play very well, especially for the Piedmont side. Ryan Jolly averaging 26 points per game. He was dominant against Wheaton, and we'll see what he and the Lions can do tonight. And then Riley O'Connor making that final shot against Heidelberg. Absolute brilliance from them. We'll see how these two teams shake out against each other. And let's roll from King Arena for this championship matchup. Glad you're with us wherever you may be. 7.05 p.m. 
But still a great time for some basketball. Here's Tyshawn Walker for the Alma Scots. The drive and the kick out back outside. Here is Walker. Walker, six on the shot clock. And now a three-pointer by Bordeaux. That one comes up short. I like the offensive possession there. Good shot from Bordeaux. Fortunately, yep. unable to capitalize. And here's the foul. Counting in one and starting off immediately is Devin Dean for the bucket. And we see Ryan Jolly controlling the floor. Nice pass to the inside. And he's able to get the bump and one for number 30, 31, Devin Dean. Dean, eight points, three rebounds, two assists. One of those five starters, four of seven from the field. Really effective against the Thunder. Trying to make it a three-point play, and he does. So really three-nothing lead. We already see Heidelberg coming, or excuse me, we see Piedmont coming out, taking no holes bars, and pushing the tempo of this game. Piedmont got the win against Wheaton. Dominant performance for them. Won it by 13, but the final score does not indicate how well they actually played. Here's Bordeaux kicking it back. It is Boffman. Boffman slicing. Five on the shot clock. Riley. Now two to shoot. Gonna have to put this one up as Bordeaux. That one no good. Yeah, and great defense there by Piedmont, forcing a somewhat of a tough shot there from Bordeaux, as we're able to see a lot of good cuts, but Piedmont able to stick with their men. Amo got the win, 86 to 84. What a game that was. 15 to shoot, fading that one away. Well, that one will not fall for Fisher Darden. It was a good shot by Darden, open butt fading away. Unfortunately, just not quite enough power on it. Ball well, almost lost. Going up against Dean, and it looks like a foul on the way up. Shot's not going to count. Leave. That was number 23, Connor Riley. On the second chance, the ball actually goes in, but the foul was called before that. It'll go to the line for two free throws. So it's on the way up, Connor Riley talked about that game winning shot with two seconds left 28.6 rebounds, four assists. Shot 63% on true shooting for the Scots. And an absolutely great game from Riley, the Benedictine transfer, the senior out of Blanchard, Michigan. He's going to be big as the Scots want to establish their offense here against a tough team like the Lions. Able to knock down both free throws. And we were talking about Piedmont yesterday, the fact that obviously they were able to win against Wheaton, but the fact that they played against Coastal Carolina and they almost lost, they actually almost won. They only lost by two to a Division I opponent. Absolutely. Coastal Carolina, a good D1 basketball team. And those are some of the challenges that some D3 teams get, as we see even a conference opponent of Wheaton's North Park faced a Division I team earlier. So what a test for Piedmont. What an opportunity. They also played Emory, who's number 19th in the country, lost by seven to them. But we're dominant against Warren Wilson. Here comes a three-pointer on the way, but that one's no good. Hellenbrook gets the offensive rebound, though, and now a fight for the ball. And it's going to be a jump ball, and it's going to stay with the Lions. Great offensive possession there from Piedmont as we see Jolly finding the open man with the extra pass, and the extra rebound there for Hellebrook creates a second opportunity. It'll be Noah reared into inbound. And they go high, but that pass is going to be picked off by Noah Boffman. It's interesting to see Boffman didn't try to run the floor. He slowed down the tempo, although that's an errant pass there. And now Piedmont is going to throw it right oh my back. Gosh, they just threw it right back. Reardon right back to Colt Meister. And a three-pointer. That one is good. You see for Alma, 23 Riley taking the shot. And what a play there. You can see them playing with a little bit of some press. Here's Ryan Jolly now, able to get across the backcourt, avoid the 10-second violation. Definitely see like the Scots are trying to disrupt Piedmont early on with a lot of close defense. Here's Ryan Jolly fading away, able to bury that mid-range J. And if Ryan Jolly gets going here, the Scots are going to have a lot of trouble. We see what how well he did against Wheaton. If Piedmont can get him going, there's not much that can stop him. They swing it out on the wing. Good passing. It's now Bordeaux who has it inside and able to knock down that one is Colton Meister. Love the pass from Bordeaux to Meister, finding him unopened or guarded on the inside. I believe that one's going to be out on Alma. So Piedmont will have possession. 
So far, all five Piedmont's points coming from Riley. You really Connor. know, this Alma goes back to this press. There's Noah rearing. Or Jolly. 15 on the 30 for Ryan Jolly, who had 22 points. 10 of 17 from the field shot, 62% on true shooting. A on the shot clock, screen set by D. Now five to shoot, going that, against Bachman. That's great defense there from Bachman. So far, nice contest, but unfortunately unable to prevent the three. I mean, Ryan Jolly already heating up. First make three-pointer. Didn't come until the third quarter in that win against Wheaton. But he was really effective driving the ball against the Thunder. Seems like so far they're going to try to do a double team there on Riley. Which of the three-pointer by Walker looking for the response. No good. Dean with the defensive rebound. Dean's going to try to run the floor here. Oh, Hellenbrook almost lost the ball's on the ground. Now a fight for it. It's loose. And it's going to be a timeout on the floor taken by Piedmont. And Joe Hellebert putting his body on the line there as he's diving for that ball. Love the feisty play so far here from the big man. And knowing that this, 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 that this is the Lee Fun Classic Championship game, both teams are wanting to put it on the line, especially since this is a young season. There's still plenty of season left. Absolutely, and again, as we said before, this is a good test for both of these teams. As we see Piedmont, a bit of an older team, a lot of juniors and seniors in the starting lineup for them. So definitely, this is a place where they have been in some of these bigger situations before. They've had the D1 competition against Coastal Carolina. And so, good to see a lot of experience coming out here in the Lee Fun Classic, both with Piedmont and with Alma. And for Alma, they finished six and 19, second to last in their conference. Only three wins in the Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, but off to a three and one start. And I think a very promising start for second year coach Fitzpatrick. Absolutely, and we've seen Connor Riley is the key to their offense so far. I'd like to see the big man, number 32, Connor Meister, or Colton Meister, get into the game here a lot, see if they can utilize the side advantage with him against Dean. Piedmont finished last season 13 and 14. Here comes another three from Ryan Jolly. Boom goes the dynamite. Wow, Ryan Jolly making his presence known here at King Arena. Eight points already for him, his second made triple. That pass is still with Alma. 16 now to shoot. Collins from downtown, he hits the triple. And that's the type of response you need. That was great defense earlier in the possession by Reardon from Piedmont, but the three is able to go, and we have ourselves a back and forth, back and forth affair. And look at this, number five, Jolly against number five, Donovan Collins, five against five. Here comes now Devin Dean inside, kicks it back out to Darden. That's an interesting play right there where they don't have the two big men match up against each other. They have Dean on Meister. That one off the hands of Reardon, and it will be Alma Ball. As you see there, I like the pass inside, but good defense there by Collins for Alma, intercepting that pass. Donovan Collins now to inbound. And substitution for Piedmont as you have Jeremiah Carter Johnson coming into the ball game. Absolutely. Another big man we see here for Piedmont. As we see, they go with a larger lineup. Here comes the drive, but it's rejected. Ooh, I thought Carter Johnson might have taken a charge there, but there was no call. Here is now Ryan Jolly able to get inside Carter Johnson, but blocked right back. And that's a great play there by Meister with the defense. Oh, come on, back to back. This time Ryan Jolly, absolute chaos and a foul goes against Jolly. Well, we have a block on one side and then Jolly responds, absolutely denying Walker at the rim there. Is able to time his jump really well. And even though Alma did not finish last season on a high note, this season they're coming out of the gate and there's challenging Piedmont. This season for the Scots has the potential to be really good. I mean, they're projected to finish fourth in the MIAA. Expected to take that next step under Coach Fitzpatrick. Absolutely, and when you see a team go through a season of adversity like Alma has, it builds a lot of character and experience for the upcoming season. So they know how to battle adversity. They know how to hang in there with good teams. Here's Boppin from the corner. That one's no good. Offensive rebound by Collins and able to put it back in. Nice play. You can almost categorize that one as sort of a pass to Collins, but 
Collins completely unguarded on that side, so he's able to get the easy putback. A lot of experience on the starting line for the Scots. I mean, Walker's a senior, Connor Riley a senior, Meiser a senior, as well as Bordeaux. So four seniors for the Scots in the starting line. The only freshman, sorry, juniors, Noah Boffman. Absolutely. So far, we see two very experienced teams, and they're showing it defensively. And speaking of Boffin, he just got the steal. Now a three-pointer on the way. Trying to knock it down. Connor Riley from downtown. And there you go, Connor Riley. As we can see, when you establish other threats, like on the previous scoring, Connor Riley is able to make that pull-up jumper. Lions trying to get across the backcourt. They successfully do. Now Ryan Jolly will pull and hits the triple. Oh my goodness, that's three threes for Ryan Jolly. Part of me is thinking we're gonna see a, a shootout between these two guards. Ryan Jolly and then Connor Riley, both key scorers for this team. We'll see how they match up against each other. And here's Connor Riley kicking it out for Collins, can't score. Fortunately, a great pass there. I love to see Riley not just doing it all himself, but passing it out to his teammates. Jolly on the drive, and he's going to be fouled hard. Looks like he'll go to the line as that shot was on the way up. I believe and for Alma, we see a player down. That's Xavier Glenn Jr., the senior out of Macomb, Michigan, who's slow to get up as he was helped by his teammate Riley. As we see so far, that was a nice drive there by Jolly, going high to the rim, trying to get that basket. But we can see what an explosive player he is, trying to do it all, all himself. And so we're going to see a lot of drives, a lot of good three-point shooting from him. I'm interested to see how he sets up a lot of his teammates and how he is as a facilitator as well. And typically, when Piedmont is able to win, it's mainly because Ryan Jolly is able to spread the ball out to his other playmakers, such as Devin Dean, Fisher, Dard, and Joe West. Hellenbrook, but when his team is losing, typically it's all on him to sort of bury out the lines in order to have a chance to win. Absolutely. I think as a facilitator, one of the key players is going to be sending it down to Joe Westbrook on the inside, establishing that dominance within the paint so that they can kick out and it opens up the three for Jolly. Jolly knocks down both free throws last season, 125 assists, which led the team, also led the team in points per game with 16.4 and rebounds with 6.3, so pretty much the do-it-all person. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes you have some of those guys. For Wheaton, we knew Tyson Crookshank dominant, and for this Piedmont team, Connor, or I believe for Jolly, is the same way. Meanwhile, Donovan Collins, the freshman on a playing field, Illinois with another three. And that's what we'd love to see for Alma, spreading out the ball, getting three-point opportunities for everyone. And so far, lots of good three-point shooting here. Here's Ryan Jolly on the drive once again, does not get a foul, and now here comes Tyshawn Walker. Absolutely, Alma. And another three, boom, goes the dynamite. Donovan Collins, back-to-back -back threes, and a timeout is He's taken gonna say they're on pushing the floor. The tempo. Really good shot there by Collins, as we've seen. Great play so far and great three-point shooting from both Riley and Collins. Timeout on the floor, 21 to 16 in favor of Alman. What about that start? Wow, yeah. absolutely great start there. Collins with 11 points currently leading Riley as he's been one of those sharpshooters that's been found in the corner near the top of the key. And so while a lot of the defense has been focused on Riley and for good reason, he's been distributing it to Collins here who's been able to get 11 points. And he's only made five three-pointers all of this season. And he was quiet against Heidelberg, only three points, made one three-pointer, but my goodness, exploding right out of the gate. Absolutely. Sometimes it's the players you don't expect. You over-prepare for one, and it leaves an open opportunity for a guy like Donovan Collins. And right now for Piedmont, they're 5-9 and nine from the field, but look at this, 7-14, 5-9 from downtown. Look, these are ridiculous numbers. I mean, both teams are really hitting from beyond the arc. Absolutely, and so far, 13 points, all on the hands of Ryan Jolly. As we see, Dean was able to get that three. So four for five for him, 55% or 55.6% shooting, as you said. So far, really good play, but we'll see if Jolly's able to distribute it out to some of his other guys. We'll see who can contribute offensively. And Piedmont has a lot of weapons to work with. We saw what they did against the Thunder with Devin Dean, Joe Hellenberg, Nilla Rear, even Griffin Neville, who made some plays. But as you said, the majority of the scoring going to Jolly. 
And we can see sometimes teams get a little over-reliant on one player, trying to see if they can play hero ball. But if Piedmont has any chance, obviously Jolly's going to be Jolly, but <laughs> nice has no pun intended <laughs> on that one. It just happens. But, you know, you're going to have to see contrib contributions from around the court. And stepping up and knocking down that shot. How about Caleb Lesh? Yeah, Caleb Lesh. Come one of those role players there for Piedmont. We'll see if he's able to become the second man tonight for Piedmont. It cuts the lead down to two. Here's Caleb Bordeaux now with the ball. Kicks it out wide, but that one is going to be taken away by Hellebrook leading the fast break. Nice play by Hellebrook there and good decision stopping. A three-pointer from the corner, back-to-back -back three pointers, and this time in courtesy once again, Caleb Lesh. Caleb Lesh coming through when we were saying that Piedmont needs another person to step up. Caleb Lesh showing that he can do it from downtown. Here's Collins firing and hitting. My goodness, we have ourselves a shootout. Collins absolutely unconscious right now from three-point land. There's going to be a foul inside. That pass was intended for Joy, but they took him out. Almost took him out with that hold. Absolutely, and we see Collins lurking around. It's kind of rare that you see a person who makes a three not instantly fall back, but apply a lot of pressure defensively. That's a great play. 24-22 in favor of the Alma Scots. Again, took care of Heidelberg last night, 86-84. to They shot 42% from the field in the entire ball game. We see Jolly trying to go to work here. Kicks it to Hellenbrook. He will take the triple. Joe Hellenbrook comes up a little bit short. Fight for the rebound. And now here comes Collins. Like the double take there. Unfortunately, just unable to convert. Wide open for three. Knocking it down to Quan Pao from beyond the arc. Wow, for this Alma team, who cannot shoot the three is going to be the question here. Seems like they can go to anyone, and they're able to convert from beyond the arc. I mean, Alma has already made eight three-pointers. They're eight of 12. Piedmont, they're five of seven from downtown. Absolutely unconscious shooting here. Here's now Helen Brook. Helen Brook, the floater. That one's good. You see the Euro step from the big man there. I mean, six, six foot eight, you're right. Absolutely taking a page out of Kristaps Porzingis' book. Oh, nice. Here's Collins again. Oh, not able to score right there. You see the nice rebound there by number 20 for Piedmont Carter Johnson. Here comes Neville. And now it's Caleb Lesh, but that one's taken away. Unfortunately, Caleb Lesh doing a little bit too much as Alma tries to run the floor. Another three-pointer. That one's no good for Collins. As we see, I'd like to see Piedmont slow it down a little bit, see if they can set up their offense. And from half court, you see Jolly doing just that. 27-24, three-point lead in favor of the Alma Scots. Lee Fun Classic Championship matchup between two teams, really good teams. Here's Carter Johnson pulling that one's no good. Mm, I'd like to see him drive to the basket on that one, go to work against, I believe that would have been Meister for Alma. Do we see Meister doing the same? They swing it out wide. There's now Connor Riley, and the three-pointer again by Collins is no good. And now a fight for the ball, it's taken away. Alma has it, ball still loose. Nice play by Bordeaux there, getting Alma a second chance at this one. When you think it's over, he's able to poke it out. Here comes another three, and another make! Gabe Bordeaux, the senior from Alma, Michigan, from beyond the arc. Bordeaux not only just creating an opportunity for his team, creating an opportunity for himself to hit another three. I mean, look at this shootout. 18 combined threes. Looks like a foul on the way up. Shot is good. I believe they're going to call. I believe that's going to be an offensive foul on that one. And nope, they're going to call. Yep, they're going to call that on the defense. So it will send Ryan Jolly to the free throw line. And correction, actually 13. Combined three-pointers from both teams, not 18, so apologies about that. And Jolly now to the free throw line. Jolly trying to get 16 here already wow. in the early stages of this game. If you're wondering, his career high is 37. I mean, he had 22 against Wheaton. Oh, and there's a steal. Oh, here comes Jolly, and nearly a miscommunication. Looks like Jolly tried to go with a no-look pass there. Two, number four. Yeah, Reader wasn't expected. Oh, another foul counted and one. 
This time it's Griffin Neville and a chance to make it a three-point play. Griffin Neville, nice drive there for Piedmont, getting the foul and one taking it to the basket, doing himself. Neville, 13 points, was just perfect from the field. Five of five, two of two from the charity stripe. Absolutely, and this is going to be Piedmont's game plan. They're going to go mostly with Jolly as he gets the steal on this one, the lob. And now here is Reardon, and that one goes out of bounds. That was rejected at the net by Tyshawn Walker. Wow, what a play. And we know that this Piedmont unit, they love to get takeaways. They had 29 takeaways against Warren Wilson. Nearly had 20 against the Thunder last night. And Ryan Jolly, five steals. Here's Jolly taking it from downtown. Boom, goes the dynamite. Oh, my Lord. Oh, what a wow. shot by Ryan that was, Jolly. That was way from downtown. Ryan Jolly, absolutely fearless. Now gives him 19 points. Yeah, he can pull up from anywhere. And when you have a player that's that dangerous, it really opens up the rest of the team. So you can get contributions like from Lesh and from Dean. You know, it feels like I'm watching an all-star game. It's I'm absolutely, we, we call a lot of Wheaton basketball, but this is really nice calling a game that, you know, we're not used to seeing these teams, but it just feels like a great all-star game. Absolutely. So far, we've seen dominant performances here from Ryan Jolly from the Piedmont side, as well as from Colin shooting very well from downtown. And so far, this is a team. These are two teams that are very experienced, know what they're doing, know who they are as a team. And so this is kind of similar to what we saw a lot last year in the days of Niamey Dome and Tyson Cruikshank mm. when they were running the floor here at King Arena. Obviously, something that Wheaton can look to aspire to. Uh, here is Tyshawn Walker on the ensuing possession. Gets double team. We know that Piedmont loves to be aggressive. Nice job getting out of the trap there by Walker. Good passing around. Here's Connor Riley. He will fire from downtown. That one rings out, though. In and out, and I like the shot. Most of the times I'm when I say from three-point range, I'm a little skeptical, but with these players, I'm fine with them taking the threes. Oh, a nice spin move inside and finishing is Fister Darden. Wow, what a spin move by Darden, getting to the basket and finishing with one hand. First field goal for him, 18 points, five rebounds, and a 72% true shooting. Here comes a three by Walker, no good, and it looks like a foul. That one will go against Piedmont. Absolutely, Walker, I like the shot, and that's a good closeout there. Number 30 on Piedmont, Darden. So now Tyshawn Walker, the senior out of Landover, Maryland, to inbound. A five-point lead in favor of the Lions. And we're going to see Landon Morris Pierce into the game for the first time for Alma. At two points against Heidelberg. Here comes Powell, goes inside, and bringing down the hammer with some authority. Nice pass there. He makes the extra pass. I thought he was going to go to the rim, but the, nice, the extra pass able to create the dunk opportunity. It's Xavier Glenn Jr., the six foot six senior, on the ensuing possession. Cannot finish. It's Reardon. Let's see if Alma decides to run the floor here. I think they are going to. Daquan Powell passes it to the outside. 4-3. That one's good by Connor Riley. It's Alma's bread and butter there as it looks like he's going to drive inside but makes the pass out to Riley, who's open for the three. And we're tied here at 35. Indeed, we are. Here comes Darden now dying on the baseline. Carter Johnson now has it. Swing it out wide. Pass there from Carter Johnson, looking to get good ball movement here. Noah Reardon time of a weird shot, but somehow Ooh. got that shot to fall. Wow. Noah Reardon with the awkward looking shot, but it's able to go, and he does that in double coverage. Oh my goodness, and an offensive foul. It's going to go against Xavier Glenn. He was trying to drive inside, but that bumps him. Jeremiah Carter Johnson, the one taking the charge there, definitely get stuck in an elbow by Xavier Glenn Jr. And Hi Alma against Heidelberg, they shot 42% from the field, 10 of 29 from downtown. But I mean, you look at these stats, they're 12 of 24, 9 of 18 from beyond the arc. My goodness. Wow, 75% free throw or three-point shooting there from Piedmont. And all categories above 50%. And for Piedmont, they were 31 of 58 from the field, 53%, 6 of 13 from downtown. But really heating up here in this first half. And so far, we've seen a lot of good ball movement, not just Ryan Jolly taking it down the floor. Here is Darden, but he's being called for a travel. 
Absolutely. Darden trying to drive on the inside. It would have been driving into Chippewa Cobbler. Yep, I believe that was three steps. Let's see what the ruling is. As you said, it might be three steps. It looks like it shuffled his feet a little bit, but they're going to. It looks like they're going to just let that one go. I believe like they were giving an explanation to Greg Neely, head coach of Piedmont. And here is Walker pushing the pace. Now they go inside the floater. That one's too strong, though, for Meister. I like going inside to Meister, but I don't love the shot. I'd like to go see him go stronger to the rim. And now here is Ryan Jolly. Already 19 points for him, as you just said. Of course, it looks like this is one where Ryan Jolly's looking to do it himself. Jolly, and it's stripped away by Riley. Fortunately, not a lot of awareness there as it's being able to get stripped. Tyshawn Walker, though, cannot finish on the other wing. And it's Hellenburg with the rebound. Great rebound there by Hellenburg, taking that one off the rim, creating the opportunity here for Piedmont. Here's Carter Johnson. They work it back. And now taking the three, but that one's no good for Reardon. Yes, nice shot by Reardon. I believe that what we said earlier about a weird shot, that looks like Reardon's normal shot. Mm. It just looks like he goes up a little to the side, but his form works for him. Here's Bordeaux fading away, and he's going to be called for the travel. Yep, a little bit of, I think an extra step was taken there on the step back. You see one, two, yep. Shuffled his feet a little bit, didn't keep the plant foot down. Tyshawn Walker for the Scots will check out. And you have Donovan Collins, the freshman, checking back into the ball game. So we see the full court press here from the Scots once again. Oh, let's see if they have numbers up. They believe Hellbrook hold, held up. Here is now Ryan Jolly against Bordeaux. Jolly. And he's going to need to kick this one out. Unfortunately, the double team came for him. Expect to see a lot of double teams trying to take away their star playmaker as Carter Johnson not able to finish. And Carter Johnson going fading to the other side. I'd like to see him go to his strong side. Here comes Bordeaux driving baseline, tries to kick to the outside. Oh, Bachman nice almost pass. lost it, puts it up, and somehow knocks it down. Wow. And wow, did he draw the play. foul as well? Yes, he did. What a play there by Noah Bothman. He's able to drive up, get the and one. And what a pass there by Bordeaux. So Nolan Bothman a chance to make it a three-point game. Had 10 points last night against Heidelberg. Four of eight from the field. Absolutely. It seems like even though we obviously have the clear two stars of the show in, Ry in Riley and Jolly, we have a lot of really good contributors on both of these teams. And we talked about Nolan Bothman. And then don't forget for the Lions, Darden and Neville making some plays. Absolutely, it seems like good passing is able to get Piedmont out of the press. Here's now Joe Hellenbrook, he's on the ground. They want to travel, they don't get it. No travel call there, Piedmont gets second life. 14 on the shot clock, and now 12 to shoot. They go back to Hellenbrook, takes the mid-range jumper, nothing but that for Joe Hellenbrook. Like the mid-range jumper there for Joe Hellenbrook, there was a lot of Traffic inside, he's able to leak out, hit the jumper, not covered. Four points now for Hellenburg on two of three shooting. Had three points last night against Wheaton. Here's Bordeaux, kicks it back out, 4-3, Connor Riley comes up short. And that one's just a little short sometimes. You get, oh, and a defensive breakdown here. Indeed, but missing instead. And it's going to be a foul against Alma. Yep, that was number 23, Caleb Lesh going up for Piedmont against Meister. And he definitely just goes up wildly trying to draw that foul. Good play there to get it. And so it will send Caleb Lesh to the free throw line. The sophomore at Cummings, Georgia. Played in five games all of last season. So didn't get as, didn't, didn't get as much playing time. But now getting significant minutes right here. Played against Emory as well as Warren Wilson, and then Wheaton had two steals in that W. Yeah, and we see a, a key missed free throw here. This has been a very tight game so far, 39-38 in favor of Piedmont. And so we'll see how both teams shoot from the free throw line down the stretch. 
So he misses both, they come up empty. And that's a tough possession. We haven't seen a lot of missed shots here so far, so it's weird to see. You see the double team on Walker. Here's Bordeaux against Reardon. They go inside, but rejected. Nice play there, trying to get the foul, but unable to as Piedmont's going to run the floor. Nice pass outside. And Helmbrook almost had that one taken away. Here's a three-pointer. It's good by Joe Hellenbrook. What a shot there by Hellenbrook. Gets the second chance opportunity from the extra pass that was made. What a shot there. Seven points now for Hellenbrook. Four-point lead. Here comes a three-pointer by Bordeaux. He responds. And that's the type of response you need from a veteran team. Bordeaux faking the extra pass, misleading his defender, and is able to take the wide-open shot for himself. And a timeout is taken on the floor. My goodness, I know we keep saying this before, but what a shootout between these two teams. Absolutely. It seems like uh, Alma's mere 47% uh, shooting from three is poor compared to Piedmont's 70% wow. from beyond the arc. I'm but both of those are very, very good. I mean, look at the last game for Alma. They were 33 of 70, 42 percent. And then for Piedmont against Wheaton, they were 31 of 50 for 53 percent. So pretty solid numbers. But here in this ball game, both teams are just blowing out their previous records. Absolutely. And so far, it, it's not like we've been seeing a lot of high percentage shots either. Lots of threes, lots of great drives to the baskets with good finishes, not as many mid-range jumpers. And so it's not like these teams are getting necessarily wide open shots. They're making a lot of tough contested shots at the rim. And you're talking about the star players for both teams, for Alma, that being Connor Riley, and for Piedmont, it being Ryan Jolly. We have Donovan Collins for the Scots, who's leading the team in scoring. Absolutely, and Piedmont's going to run the floor here. It looks like a foul inside. It'll stay with Piedmont. That's a nice pass there by Neville inside to Dean. And Dean, unfortunately, not in a great position to shot, but he draws, get it the shot, but he draws the foul anyway. Scott with already 18 fouls. Devin Dean to the free throw line. It's a one and one and a miss right there. Mm -hmm. See in the second possession where they go to the line and come up empty. We'll see if that plays a role. And meanwhile, here is Donovan Collins rings in and out. Yeah, and that's a good shot there from Collins, but unfortunately unable to get it to fall. Reardon kicks it to the outside. 4-3, no good though for Neville. Oh my gosh, did we just see two missed three-pointers? It's normal to see, but strange in this game. Collins misses, so that make it three consecutive misses from both teams. Looks like both teams are starting to cool down with 2.15 left to go. Absolutely. As much as 70% shooting from three is very cool for Piedmont, it is a little bit unsustainable. So we'll see how Piedmont adjusts. There's get Bordeaux, good passing all around now. Here comes Collins, two on the shot clock. They're going to have to put up the shot. It's Bordeaux, no good. Fight for the rebound. It's M Walker who gets it. That's a great second chance opportunity now, and Alma has a chance. Uh-oh. And they're able to save it, but it looks like a backcourt violation going against the Scots. Yeah, begin the 10-second over and back, and that's unfortunately Meister unable to set his feet before he makes that pass, and he knew it instantly. And so coming out of the game is Noah Reardon for the Lions. 42-41 in favor of the Lions in the Lee Fun Championship game. See Hellebrook mastering the offense here is going to give it back up to Jolly. Seemed like there was a bit of talking. I believe that was the two Bofman talking to the ref. Here's now Dean on the drive. Dean high off the glass. No good. Ooh, that, would, that would have been a great shot if it landed. We'll see how Alma runs the floor now. Here's now Connor Riley on the ensuing possession. Two pointer on the way for Bachman. It's no good. Well, and that's tough because Tyshawn Walker was wide open there. Unfortunately, raising his hands, pleading for the ball. Both teams are starting to cool down with under 110 to go. Have not seen as much explosiveness compared to the start of this ball game. There comes the drive, no good for Neville. Yeah, and at some point the tough shots are going to start not falling. Tyshawn Walker from downtown, also no good. Yeah, but as we see both these teams starting to cool down, it's going to be key to try to slow down the tempo a little bit, set up your offense, try to get a high percentage shot or an open look. Here comes Neville, that time it falls for Griffin Neville. Love the stop and start there from Griffin Neville as he's able to lose his defender, 
Again, a nice high percentage shot. And so now we're entering the final minute of this half. Piedmont up by three. About a five second differential between shot clock and game clock. See, Almo's gonna try to dribble their way out. Nice pass there to the inside to Bordeaux. It's back to Boffman. 12 on the shot clock. Here comes Riley against Dean. Inside to Meister, bangs it home, Connor Meister. Nice awareness there by Meister, trailing Riley, and when Riley got in trouble, he's able to bail it out. Oh, oh look at this, something went, something happened. It looks like there was a little bit of confusion about the inbound. It seemed at first as if Leich was supposed to take it. it. Looks like no harm, no foul, as Leich is able to take the inbound again. So 2.2 seconds left. They just stopped the clock as it was running. There's Caleb Lesh to inbound. He's gonna have to get this one a little farther down. Ooh, pass. dangerous pass. Here comes Dean, he's gonna put it up at the buzzer. Almost makes it Devin Dean, but what a clash between these two squads here in the Lee Fun Classic Championship game. And it's the Piedmont Lions leading 44 to 43. Absolutely, what play we've seen so far. 19 points from Ryan, Ryan Jolly, uh, 11 points for Riley on the other side, and Dave Collins with 14 as well. So we've seen more distributed shooting from Alma. Both of these teams shooting absolutely dynamo from beyond the arc. And we'll have the start of the second half after these messages and a word from the Wheaton Thunder Sports Network. definitely the best place I mean for me that I could have ever gone I look back just making that decision to come to Wheaton and I'm so grateful you know for everyone in that process who helped lead me to Wheaton I mean I feel like I've, I've grown in just so many different ways looking back to my freshman year even just thinking about it now to kind of where I am now and really couldn't have asked for any better place to be and honestly again that's a testament to all the people that I got to surround myself with every day here when I saw him play in high school I came back and told Coach Banner, he clearly is talented enough, but he is so small. Growing up as very short, skinny, kind of out of place point guard, I think that's really where you have to have a chip on your shoulder to know and go in that, you know, I've put in the work and I, you know, I deserve to be on the court here. But to be honest, he wasn't the best player on his high school team, and then he wasn't the best player at Wheaton for four years. But honestly, very quickly into his first few practices, I could tell we had somebody pretty special but he is by all measure now one of the all-time great players to ever put on a Wheaton jersey. But he's also gonna be the type of young man that you can point back to and say, this is what a star player looks like, behaves like, and acts. I think like looking back early on in my career, I really was like afraid to fail. And that's something that we talked about a lot was throw all your dice out there, put all the chips out there. Um, and don't be afraid to fail. And that's something that we kind of worked on together. And that's really what helped us gain trust. And, and I mean, for me, my past, you know, two, three years, I was really able to play more free. When you get a young man like Tyson, you realize you got something pretty special as a coach because in a lot of ways, he became the leader of our team. And I just cheered a lot. I mean, he just became somebody who really embodies everything you want from a best player. It's honestly such a great honor. It's something that, I mean, I never really thought was, was on the table. I do describe the Justice Trophy regularly uh, as the Division Three Heisman for men's basketball. It really is in many ways the most prestigious award that is given out in men's and women's basketball at the Division Three level. 
not only measures the basketball ability of the men and women at Division III basketball, but also the academic and service of those individuals. So it's a total award that really encompasses not only just the talent level, but really the most outstanding student athlete in our sport. The initial feelings were just like of gratitude and thankfulness um, to Wheaton, to Coach Shower, to Coach Panner, um, everybody who invested in me during this time. I, I thought he was better than people probably perceived. The fact that he wasn't on any All-America lists, preseason lists surprised me given the career he had had to that point. And I think he kind of carried a little bit of that chip on his shoulder into this season and used that as motivation. Uh, I'm not gonna let anybody outwork me. I think that's really kind of where it comes from and, and stems from is just wanting to win badly enough to where you know, you're, you're willing to sacrifice. One of the things I love about Tyson is he averaged over five rebounds a game and he's not much taller than me. Um, so he just simply was relentless uh, to go rebound the basketball and knew that um, given our, our personnel, that was gonna be a potential area of weakness and that he needed to help us there. I honestly believe if I didn't show up for a week, Tyson would have made sure our team did exactly the same thing we did when I was there. And so his legacy will, uh, will be brought up over and over and over again, whether I'm here or not, because he's gonna be on the wall and that trophy's gonna be downstairs. The academic reputation of the institution is so high that the students we get here are really self-motivated to do well academically. That matters to them. So they're typically pretty good students on our roster. And then because of their relationship to Jesus, there's a sense that we should serve others and, and try to model that as Jesus did. Looking back on the Israel trip and Zimbabwe trip, those are two things, um, I mean, just looking back on my career that I will never forget. The relationships that we built out there were just so incredible. Go to the Holy Lands, we're gonna do all those biblical sites and, and really study the Bible uh, on that trip. And our trip to Zimbabwe, which Tyson also went on, we did, uh, we did clinics and did service projects. And we are gonna visit the historical sites and, and do some fun stuff uh, in addition to playing some games. But we're gonna do it in a different uh, context than most Division Three basketball programs. Um, there's just so many incredible things about those trips. It makes the whole time at Wheaton and specifically a Wheaton basketball player just so special. All he cared about was winning and that just makes life easy for a coach. Because if your best player cares about that and your best player has his work ethic, it's hard for other people to come up with too many excuses. They sort of follow because he's just such a great leader. I think one of the fun things about deciding where to go to college is that all of your peers are in kind of the same place. Remember, other people have done this, other people have gone before me and will come after me and are going through it with me now, but it's not as isolating as it may feel. I didn't really know what I was looking for at first. It started with me just scrolling through website after website of colleges. I knew I wanted something that was medium sized. I knew that I wanted a strong natural sciences department. I knew that I wanted to be challenged academically inside the classroom, but I also didn't want life to stop in the classroom. I'm grateful that I was able to visit as many schools as I did. A large part of my decision to attend Wheaton was influenced by my campus visit. What instantly stood out to me was that everyone on campus was smiling. I felt welcomed, I felt appreciated, seen, and wanted. And so the application process itself was really joy-filled. The decision process was a, quite a different story. I got the decisions and acceptances and rejections back, and rejections stung. I became very stressed. I started to question, do I want to keep going to school? Do I want to go far? Do I want to come closer to home? And that's where I really started to ask, okay, what are the options remaining before me? And Wheaton was again at the top. I started to work with Ellen, my admissions counselor. I just worked with her really closely and had several hour long phone calls. Just talking through what does a Wheaton education look like? What is the value of a Wheaton education? And got to have personal conversations and interactions. So even during a time that was really stressful, I felt valued and seen as a whole person rather than just a GPA and test scores. When I first came to college, I thought I knew exactly what my career path would look like. I had my five-year plan, my 10-year plan, and that all changed drastically. And now my plan looks nothing like that. And that is absolutely okay. In the process of choosing my major, I 
gotten so stressed out. I wish that I would have just trusted that in the Lord's timing, I would figure it out. It's completely okay not to know your major when you first apply. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be okay, it's gonna work out. And I think college is the place that you can figure that out. It's also totally okay if you know exactly what you wanna do, what you wanna study. You actually don't need to declare a major until your sophomore year. So you'll have lots of time to explore different classes. You can go to different lectures on campus. You can talk to professors and hear different perspectives on the world and on different fields of study. We have our Center for Vocation and Career, which provides students with lots of resources to help think through their vocation. And your faculty and advisors always have their doors open to you if you ever wanna talk or have questions. College is the time to explore. It's a time to learn about different things that maybe you haven't in the past. And it's a time to develop passions and continue pouring into passions you already have. Yes, this is definitely an important decision, but remember that the Lord is with you and don't let the importance of the decision steal the joy from this amazing opportunity that you have ahead of you. Humble leaders, adventurous thinkers, faithful believers. For Christ and his kingdom, Wheaton stands at the forefront of Christian liberal arts education. Here, we facilitate an unparalleled journey for our students, bringing together deep faith and intelligence to pursue their most ambitious callings. At Wheaton, Reaching God-given potential is never accomplished alone. From coaches on the field to professors in the classroom, we come together to make space for students to wrestle with timeless questions and pursue biblically informed, thoughtful wisdom as they pursue academic, artistic, and athletic excellence. We are one of the nation's colleges that change lives because that is exactly what we do. We live, work, serve, and worship together as an educational community centered on Jesus and reflecting the beautiful diversity of his kingdom. It's collaborative, immersive, Christ-centered. Our enduring model with twin traditions of quality academics and deep faith, along with a faculty of Christian thought leaders and a staff of dedicated believers, allows us to champion the true essence of the Christian liberal arts educational experience. Continuing the legacy lived out by iconic thinkers and evangelical luminaries around the globe, Wheaton integrates and connects disciplines through Christian thought, diverse peers, and contemporary global context. Here, adventurous thinkers and faithful believers come together to create a mosaic of diverse backgrounds, beliefs, and hopes. It's a place of curiosity and conviction, a place to live out your values and pursue your ambitions. Except here, it's not only about what you can achieve, it's about who you can become. Living out our calling with heart and skill through Christ-centered leadership. At Wheaton, you don't have to settle. We call ourselves Thunder because, like Thunder, the Wheaton Network is a force moving through him and for him to build the church and benefit society worldwide. Like rolling thunder, God's mighty voice calls us to be humble leaders, adventurous thinkers, and faithful believers for Christ and His kingdom.
Welcome back to the Lee Fun Classic here in King Arena between the Piedmont Lions and the Alma Scots. And Dominic, honestly, this first half, it left me speechless. Absolutely. What a great first half of basketball we saw between these two teams. Both teams shooting absolutely lights out. 41.7% from the floor and from three overall from Alma. 53.3% from the floor, 58% or yeah, 58% from three from Piedmont. A lot of that is Ryan Jolly, four from four from three, 19 points overall. One of the keys for Alma going into the second half is gonna be how they distribute their scoring, how they attack this Piedmont team. And I think one of the things is gonna be once we see this shooting start to slow down, how do both of these teams adjust? And how about Donovan Collins for the Scots leading his team in points with 14, had a lot of crucial three pointers in the first half. Looked like uh, Riley was trying to get a shot opportunity there, but no good. That one going out of bounds, and it's going to be Lions ball early on. Looks like that pass attempt was a little too quick there for Alma. We'll see Ryan Jolly take it up the floor. Only seven turnovers in the first half for Alma. Here's now Devin Dean. Right up against Meister. Dean. So a lot of people trying to dribble and drive on the inside. Dean floats it upstairs, can't get it to fall. Fight for the ball, it's on the ground. And now it goes out of bounds. And it looks like it's going to stay with the Scots. I believe they're going to send it over to Alma. It's going to be number one, Tyshawn Walker inbounding here. A bit of a confusing ruling. But it looked like a nice opportunity from Dean. Unfortunately, a tough shot. It was much closer than I thought it was going to be. But we see a lot of players in drive as we see a kickball from Jolly. It'll stay with the Scots. You see so far, we saw a little bit in that second half at the start. The shooting started to cool down for both of these teams. So it's interesting to see how their offense adjusts. Here comes the drive inside. Nine on the shot clock. Looked like Bordeaux wanted to take that one. Nice pass on the inside for Meister. Meister tries again. No good. And that's, I think, what both these teams are going to do. If they, if the three-point shooting starts to cool down, they're going to try to drive inside. Here comes a three on the way. That one will not fall for Reardon. I believe Meister is going to be key in this game for Alma, getting the ball to him inside. He has the height advantage over a lot of these other players. Uh, but between him and Hellenbrook, both those guys are going to be big. Meister passes it back on the top of the key. Now 11 on the shot clock. Inside to Walker. No good. Nice pass on the inside from Bordeaux, but good defense by Piedmont to try to get inside and disrupt the shooting. Piedmont scoring this in their last two minutes. And Alma scoreless in their last two minutes and 30 seconds before that floater is made by Noah Reardon. Noah Reardon able to drive inside and end the scoring drought between both of these teams. We'll see if their shooting can get right back on track. At two points in the first half, shot one of six from the field. Already with his first field goal here in the second half. Ooh, nice drive. But Bordeaux misses, it comes up short. Looked like he was a little open on that first attempt and he decided to try to take the other shot. And here is the talented Ryan Jolly out of Martinez, Georgia. He's paired up against Connor Riley, so star player against star player. Now they trap him. Yep, and that's what you gotta expect for the guy with 19 points, you're gonna get the trap. And that one goes out of bounds. Off the hands of Reardon. And I get the pass from Dean as Reardon was wide open, but unfortunately the pass from Dean a little too wide. Piedmont had nine turnovers in the first half. Looking back to the outside, here's Riley. Let's see, nice, try to find the open man. Walker from downtown, that one rings out. Yeah, and that was a good shot by Walker. Unfortunately, rims in and out as Dean's gonna wanna run the floor. 10 to 25 from the field, Dean, Ooh. no good. And he might have touched the net, but it looks like a foul. Yes, I believe they're going to call a foul there. I believe that's going to be on Riley, who went up. Oh, he's nice to interact with our referees. Of course. <laughs> he's looking the monitor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just nice. in case you don't know, he asked us, is that a foul? Absolutely. It's, we have one of the rare opportunities to have a replay board <laughs> exactly. in here. 
Unfortunately for Division 3, unlike Division 1, there is no such thing as replays until you get to the NCAA tournament. Of course. <laughs> as we see, the first shot is missed by Hellenbrook. You need to make this second opportunity. Hellenbrook with seven points in the first half. Knox goes one out of two from the free throw line. Also six rebounds and three blocks of his own. The six foot eight senior at Atlanta, Georgia, making some plays. Looks like we're starting to see a zone defense here employed by Piedmont as we're going to go with the two three. And we'll see if the Scots can break that zone. It's back to Bordeaux driving baseline, looking back outside. Here comes Walker on the drive, muscles hard, and bangs it home. And one of the ways they're able to break that zone is from good passing, kicking it out to the open man. We saw a crash on Bordeaux, which left, believe that was number one Walker available. Piedmont still leads 47 to 45. Four minutes gone by in the second half. Here comes Jolly driving all the way, but can't put it in. Unfortunately there, Jolly not able to convert. So we can see the wide open three. Walker comes up short. Fight for the ball though, and a foul. Foul's gonna be going the other way. The offensive side is, we see Walker putting up the three and then crashing, believe that was Bofman trying to get the rebound. And the foul will go against Bofman. So we see this full court press. Yeah, put saw, in. It. saw it in the first half and still seeing it here. Like to see some more off ball movement here from Piedmont. It looks like a lot of dribbling done by Jolly. Nice pass. Ugh. And it will stay with Piedmont. Good disruption there by Alma as Riley was trying to get the pass inside. I believe that would have been to Darden. Look at this wide open for three. Wide open, but no good. My goodness, Fisher Darden, a very clean look. Absolutely, and those are the types of shots that were landing in the first half, not quite landing in the second half for either of these teams. It's going to be interesting to see how they're just. They're going to take more threes. And here's Donovan Collins. That one misfires. Dean with the rebound. And I like this opportunity, getting the full court advantage. Oh, look at that. Joe Hellenbrook brings it down with some authority. And that's what you get the advantage of a big man who can run the floor. You get the dunk opportunity. And here's another, another turnover. One. Indeed, and that one went off the floor. Looks like a foul. I believe they're going to call the foul on Donovan Collins here. I believe for the reach. Oh no, the bump on Dean. So Piedmont ball 49 45, a point, four point lead in their favor. Absolutely. There's nothing like a dunk on the other end when you have your shooting percentage starting to go down. You get the ultimate high percentage shot. Yeah, there are only two of seven from the field. Piedmont is, meanwhile, Alma is one of seven from the field to start the second half. Here is Dean pulling up. Dean, no good. Mm, and the drought continues for both of these teams as the shooting has come to a screeching halt. After starting so hot in the first half, Connor Riley pulls from downtown. No good. Fight for the ball now. It's still on the ground. And Piedmont still has it. Here comes a three on the way. No good for Collins. I like to see some of these teams try to drive more inside as the three-point shooting is dried up. And they kick it out to Reardon from downtown. That one will fall. Rebound call gathered in by Meister. Yeah, I'm going to keep saying it. I, I feel like at this point you need to abandon the three-point shooting for a little bit. Try to establish some more on the inside as it seems like we sh should have some more dribble drives. 13 on the shot clock, and the floater, that one does not fall for Meister. Had a clean look right there. And even a guy like Meister, who had the clean look, clanks it off the front iron. And so far, we are deadlocked here. Four points for Meister. What I like to see from Dean driving on the inside, trying to get a high percentage shot. Ugh. Dean, that one's no good. Will they rule it? And they will get the ball to Alma. Yeah, it might be getting to the point where you want to start trying to draw some fouls so you can reestablish your confidence shooting from the stripe. It's, basketball is a funny game like this where in the first half you get lights out shooting from both sides and then all of a sudden the rim decides to have a force field around it, it seems. They can't see to take it off. I mean, look at the second half numbers, 2 of 10 for Piedmont, 1 of 10 for Alma at shooting from the field. Here's the pass inside. Oh, Ooh. rejected! Still able to get it back though, but can't fall is Boffman. And what now a fight for the ball. What a rejection there by Hellenbrook. 
I was about to say a nice pass there underneath to Glenn Jr., but unfortunately Glenn Jr. absolutely denied. The size advantage goes the way of Hellebrook. Great play. My goodness, Hellebrook, six foot eight. Such great hops. Called a jump ball, so it's Piedmont ball as they now flip the possession arrow. 49-45. Here's now Ryan Jolly, picked up by the other number five in Donovan Collins. Of course, Ryan Jolly's the guy who's going to need to get going here. Oh, look at that finish by Ryan Jolly. 21 points now for him. That's what you need. You need your main guy to kickstart your offense. See if Riley can respond in kind. And it looks like a reach and foul going to go against Jolly. Leave they had Riley trying to do it himself and responds, sends it back out. Unfortunately, nothing there. And so eventually the reach comes in, yeah, from Jolly. That's going to be looks like his second foul of the game. And it's going to be number 21, Josh Elliott, into the game. Oh, Donovan Collins. Hey, but a knock down that triple and a timeout taken on the floor with 13.09 left to go in this ball game. And absolutely, we started to see the triple start to rain again for Alma. Their three-point percentage shooting dropping from 41 to 33, or I believe now 35 with that made shot. But as we've seen, this game turned in from an offensive battle, an offensive shootout, into a defensive one with a lot of blocks, a lot of good defense. We saw a little bit of a 3-2 zone employed by Piedmont for a bit there. It seems like we've seen it all in this game. And obviously this is the Lee Fun Classic named after the great head coach for the Thunder, Lee Fun, who played, who coached from 1951 to 1975. He won 361 games, only lost 240. He won five CCI champions, not the CCIW because that didn't exist. And he also won the 1957 NCAA Collegiate Division National Championship and ended up coaching eight All-Americans, so a huge impact here for the Wheaton Thunder. Absolutely. The baseball stadium here at Wheaton is named after lead fun as oh, well. Oh, wow. Nice. I actually did not know that. I've not been to the baseball stadium, but that's a really good nugget. Of course, nice field out. A f bit of a drive, seven minutes away from campus. Named in honor of Coach Fun. And the winner will win the Lee Fun Classic Championship. And there is also an MVP award that will be awarded after the conclusion of this game. You can find out who wins that award by going to the Wheaton Thunder website. Again, after the conclusion of this ball game, go to the Wheaton Thunder website to find out who wins that award, the MVP of the Lee Fun Classic. So we see more of this one-man press from Alma. Here is Ryan Jolly pushing the pace. Jolly, another field goal back to back for Jolly. And you're starting to feel good if you're Piedmont. Ryan Jolly is starting to get going. Now we see the second drive that he's able to take it to the net. Hopefully he can kickstart the rest of his team. Back up to a five point game in favor of the Lions. Here comes Bothman, kicks it back outside, another three, and another make. Oh my goodness, Donovan Collins. And we start to see people starting to heat up now. Donovan Collins from three. I believe it's gonna, they're going to get them out of the zone. There's now Neville on the drive. Neville can't finish. Seemed Fight. like he was trying to do a little too much there. And now here comes Alma on the ensuing possession. Another three. No good. It's tip, offensive rebound, and able to bang it home. It's Connor Riley. Just, and all of a sudden, we're tied. Just as quickly as the fireworks turned off, they have started back up here, and we've got ourselves another shootout. Oh, my goodness. 53 apiece. Almost under 12 minutes left to go. Here comes a three. Oh, it's gone. Boom goes the dynamite for Ryan Jolly. Wow. All of a sudden, the three start landing. Ryan Jolly able to take it from way downtown. Another three in response. That one's no good for Josh Elliott, who just checked into the ball game. So we're going to try to see, run the floor here for Piedmont. Rejected. Oh, nicely done right there. Can we please get a replay? That was just ridiculous. Xavier Glenn Jr. on the block on that one. Must have felt good after being rejected by Hellebrook earlier. Oh, indeed. That's his first block of this ball game. Again, had two blocks against Heidelberg in that win yesterday. I believe we're going to say he stepped on the line. So it's going to be a turnover for Piedmont. It's going to go back to Alma. With them down by three. 
And how about Donovan Collins? 20 points has made six three-pointers. Absolutely, the sharp shooter looking very sharp tonight. And he was quiet against Heidelberg. Four points for him, but has just exploded. And now a foul inside. That one's going to go against Piedmont. I believe that'll be Griffin Neville for Piedmont picking up the foul. As we see the attempt to get it inside. Nice play there to Xavier. Glenn Jr. That's Neville's first personal, the second team foul for Piedmont. See controlled here, drive on the inside. Ooh. Here's Bothman, and they call an offensive foul against Nolan Bothman. Yeah, it seems like he stepped in to take the charge there. The second time we've seen Carter Johnson taking the charge. A little bit of an extra oomph on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. These guys are laying out on the line. And the in season tournament, we fun class. And now fight for the ball. And they're going to call a foul there. I believe they're going to call it on Nolan Bothman. And it's back to back fouls for Bothman. Oh, and what do they just rule right now? Oh, they ruled a tech. Oh, do they? And they ruled a technical foul, I believe. That one was against Nolan Bothman, so we got the personal and now attack. And that's something you just can't do at this stage in the game. I mean, you're in a close game here, 56-53, and now Jolly's going to have to the opportunity to get points here from the line. He will shoot again. Yeah, two-point play. We see some of these critical mistakes can turn the tide in games like this where this could be as much as a five-point swing. Indeed, because Piedmont also gets possession with the technical foul. And so now they've opened up a 55 to 53 lead. Get another chance with the ball. I mean, if you're Alma, you need a big play on defense here. Looking for the inbound pass. Here's Helen Brook. And they will put in the hands of Ryan Jolly. See if Jolly decides to pull up from downtown here. 28 points for Ryan Jolly again. His career high is 37. Passes back to the outside. Here's Neville. Neville pulls up from mid-range, knocks it down. And there we go, four-point swing there for Piedmont, taking advantage of that opportunity that they had. Seven-point lead now in favor of the Lions. You see the one Walker pleading for the ball on the outside as he's left completely unguarded. Connor Riley spinning, goes inside. Now back outside. Eight on the shot clock. Riley nearly lost it. Five now to shoot. Here comes a three by Bordeaux. That one too strong. Hits the top of the shot clock. And it'll be Piedmont ball. Seems like there wasn't great vision on that offensive possession as Walker was open pleading for the ball on the outside as Piedmont was able to crash inside and crash on Riley. Well, they couldn't find the open man, Walker. Right now, a 7-0 run in the last minute, 53 in favor of Piedmont. And they have a seven-point lead. Let's see, it seems like Alma's going to want to do a double-double from the top. Oh, my goodness, Ryan Jolly, that one's no good. If he made that one, I would have just lost it. Absolutely. I knew he was looking to pull up from three somewhere. And it looks like he stepped out of bounds. A turnover for Alma. I believe we're going to get Col Col Colton Meister back into the game for the Alma Scots. Nearly under 10 minutes to go here in the Lee Fun Championship game. 60 to 53 in favor of Piedmont. Here comes the drive, and that one's no good. Fight for the ball. It's still loose. Carter nice Johnson play. almost had it. Carter Johnson, nice play, even if he didn't get the ball. Eventually, Connor Riley is able to pick it up. Here is Walker. Looks like they're showing some sort of zone defense, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, here comes a nice play made by Colton Meister. Colton Meister able to go up and get the high percentage shot there. A nice ball movement in order to get it to him. 6.6 .6 rebound, ball's on the ground. Ooh. Almost another turnover. Nice play there by Bordeaux, trying to de disrupt that defense. Ooh. Now look at this three-pointer by Carter Johnson. That one's no good. Carter Johnson, I don't believe, had taken a three-point shot this game and inside and it's going to be a foul it's going to put Colton Meister to the free throw line 
Yeah, we've seen Colster My Colton Meister, the open man, and he's gonna go up strong, get the foul from Carter Johnson. And we see if Meister can get his free throws to bring this back within a one possession game. For Meister, attempted seven free throws last season. Correction, actually, he attempted seven free throws this season, so these are his eighth and ninth attempts. Litany of substitutions here for Piedmont. It's number 31. Dean checks back into the game along with number 23, Caleb Lesh. And I think something that the Scots have to be careful about is Noah Bothman, who has four personal fouls, one more, and he's out of here. Mm, that's going to be big because he's one of those guys who can drive inside, takes away an offensive option for them, even if he hasn't had the most dynamic game. Here is Ryan Jolly against Tyshawn Walker. Uses the screen from Dean, and it's going to be a foul, and that one will go against Connor Riley. Yep, Jolly trying to drive inside, get more quick, easy points, but we see the swarm there, and yeah, the reach from Riley. It'll be an inbound pass instead. 16 right. fouls against Alma. No one else in foul trouble so far here besides Bothman. So good news is for the Scots, they don't have to worry about anyone else. Ryan Jolly being harassed back outside. Hellenbrook from beyond the yard. He cans it. Hellenbrook, nice three, even though it was contested highly. Oh, what's the call here? Didn't exactly see what was going on. Let's hear from our PA announcer. Well, they called a technical on Hellenbrook. Wow. So now back-to-back -back text. Wow. I'll so, be honest, I'm not sure what he did or what he said, but yeah, it's a fortunate mistake there for Hellenbrook. Yeah, based on what I could last see, I, I would have to assume it would have been verbal since no player fell down, there was no physical contact. But again, I'm just speculating. Mm. Wow. You can see Hellenbrook very disappointed with himself. So he is going to the bench. Thank you to our PA superstar extraordinaire, Tim Martin. We can see another huge swing here. As unfortunately for the Scots, the first shot or the second shot was missed by Riley. And so they could have as much as a four point swing here and get back to within a one possession game. The three does count as it is 63-57. Mm, yes, yes. And also these technical fouls that were charged on both teams, they really, I mean, assuming that if Alma can make a play out of it, they really do change the momentum of this game. Absolutely, and you see the chance for Alma to get this one completely back. Right now, Piedmont 7 of 20 from the field, Alma 5 of 19. Both teams have made two three-pointers. 63-57 in favor of Piedmont, leading it by six. There's Tyshawn Walker in traffic. And it looks like a foul. I think we're going to get a Piedmont foul here. I think they're going to get Jolly on the reach. That's going to be his third personal. They work it inside. Here is Meister. Now back outside from beyond the yard, but coming up short is Collins. They have a nice rebound there from Jolly, getting the control, make sure Walker doesn't get the opportunity. Ryan Jolly, 28 points in this ballgame. Pass it inside to Dean, bangs it home, Devin nice. Dean. Nice pass there, as we see, we're expecting Ryan Jolly to go up, but he dumps it off to Dean. Unexpected, opens up the floor. Nice play. 8.05 now left to go inside, and banging it home is Meister. Meister getting more opportunities here in this second half to try to make his presence feel known. Piedmont doesn't quite have a big man to match him now that Hellenbrook was off. It looks like Hellenbrook's going to return to the game, though. Nine points for Meister on four of nine shooting. He's been mainly working it inside the paint. Nice defense there by Walker, able to contain Jolly for a little bit. Here's now Darden. Dean now with it, six on the shot clock. Gonna have to be a little bit urgent here. Dean's gonna pull up, comes up short. Yeah, and that was a bit of a rush shot, as you can see the shot clock winding down. Good defense there by Piedmont. 65-59 now. And a blocking foul gonna go against the defense. 
and a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. As you can see, I believe, yeah, that one's going to be on Dean as he shuffled the feet, unfortunately unable to pick up the charge. So Tyshawn Walker now to the free throw line. And you look at the numbers, has averaged 18.5 points in just four games. Obviously, one of the five starters entering this ball game for the Scots. So far, not that many points. So it'll be his third on the night, as it's mostly been Collins and Riley who have been doing a lot of scoring, but he's been a big facilitator here. Yeah, against Heidelberg, had 27 points, a double-double performance, 27 points, 10 rebounds, and an assist. Shot 62% on true shooting. So to note, Joe Hellenbrook officially enters back into the game here for the Lions. After he was charged with that tech. 65-61, four-point lead, and here comes Dean pushing the pace inside, bangs it home. Yeah, I was looking to see if Dean was going to push that one, try to score it in. Oh, oh, that one went out of bounds, and it's going to be a turnover. Well, the Aaron pass made there by the Scots, and this is a big opportunity here for Piedmont, trying to stretch this lead. They've been able to answer all of the Scots' blows from here, and so far we've seen a few mistakes made by Alma. That's now 13 turnovers for Alma. Nice way to control that pass. That was almost going to be an over and <laughs> over the, over and back. Piedmont forced 19 turnovers in their win against the Thunder. Again, 29 against Warren Wilson. Ooh, Here comes nice Dean. Pass. Oh, Ooh. but can't finish. Yeah. Oh, and Dean pickpockets him. I know. Came out of nowhere from behind, but it's blocked. Wow, Sent back by Meister. Even if Dean isn't able to convert, what a series of plays there. He's able to get the nice pass and then the rebound. Kick it back to the outside. Wide open is Collins. No good. Offensive rebound. No. Yes, as Dean's able to control that rebound, they're going to call a jump ball. And it's going to be possession Alma. So a really good hustle play there. We've seen a lot of good effort being put in by both of these teams, especially Dean on the offensive end, getting that second rebound and causing the tie-up. Now the trap here. Almost got him right there. And he's able to find Bordeaux to get out of it. We would like to see that, them swing around that pass to Walker on the outside. Walker once again is open. Here's the floater inside. That one fall from Meister. It seems like so far they're trying to drive inside and Walker not getting a lot of opportunities as he's mostly been left open. Under six minutes left to go here in this ball game. The Lee Fun Classic Championship matchup. What a show in between these two teams. Will they rule it? And they'll rule a turnover. It went off the foot of Ryan Jolly. Jolly trying to do a little too much there, going a little too fast on the other side. Now it's going to be another turnover. Alma with a chance to get back into this game. That's only the second turnover for Ryan Jolly. Ooh. And that one, another takeaway. I'd like seeing them push the floor here. Inside, and able to knock it down. Caleb Lesh able to bang it home. Seeing more points for Lesh here. Haven't called his name recently, but that's going to be eight points for him in a contributing role. Seven point lead now, and it will stay with the Scots. Absolutely. Also, like to know we see 28 points at this point from Ryan Jolly. And we've definitely, and it's not like we haven't seen c contributions from other people either. Hellebrook's two rebounds away from a double double. Act three by Collins is no good. Offensive rebound, able to keep it alive with 5.20 left to go. We'll see if Walker has the opportunity to shoot. Another three by Collins, comes up short again. Another offensive rebound. And that's Bordeaux who's going to take it himself. And he's no good. Missed opportunities there for the Scots. So we see Piedmont going to try to run the floor here with Jolly. Ryan Jolly Ooh. trying on the reverse layup, comes up short. That would have been a really good chance, but now Alma has the chance to run the floor. Real one fast break and block, but a foul. Goes against Ryan, excuse me, Joe Hellenbrook of the Lions. Yeah, and we see a nice play there. Both players going up, and definitely a, that little extra push causes the foul. So send Connor Riley now to the free throw line. Both teams with 17 fouls here in the second half. Yeah, and if you're Alma, you're want, gonna need to make these ones here an opportunity when you're down with the clock stopped to get some free points. Connor Riley, a 90% free throw shooter, has just missed his first. And we're gonna call that one not the announcer's curse because mm. you were saying it while it yes, was being shot. Yes. 
So I cannot be criticized for that. <laughs> no, we're not held liable here. Nope. Second one is good, though. Cuts the lead down to seven. And it looks like a timeout on the floor. 69 to 62, 454 left to go. And what a treat we've had so far. Absolutely a great game played by both sides. In, so far in the second half, we've seen a lot of up-tempo offense. Piedmont's been able to get this lead by extending and running the floor. Lots of great play from Ryan Jolly. As we've seen, while the shooting has cooled down from the perimeter, we've seen a lot of great play on the inside from both these teams. And what's interesting though for Piedmont, this is sort of a fun fact trivia, but they come out of the Collegiate Conference of the South. They originally came from the USA South Conference, which had 19 teams, which was the largest conference in all of Division Three. But in November 2021, them along with nine other teams decided to split. They wanted to split. And then in February 2022, the NCAA approved of the change. And they officially began playing in the CCS beginning last season, so 2022 to 2023. And they're expected to actually bring in another team, that being Asbury, to bring it to nine teams. So goes, right? goes to show you that conference uh, conference splits, conference realignments, as we say, a lot of discussion in college sports, especially at the Division I level, yes. about realignment as we see the dissolvement of the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this stuff can go down to the D3 level as well. Indeed. Right now, there are 18, but I said nine. That's because, as I said, Asbury will be joining the conference in 2024. But because this conference is new, the winner of the CCS tournament will not receive an auto bid to the NCAA tournament. So both, so, both, for, so for Piedmont, they would have to wait, or any team out of the CCS, they would have to wait until the fall of 2024 to receive that auto bid. And that applies for all the sports. Wow, that's, that's huge. And that is one of the challenges with the transition period is you don't get that access to the tournament. Look at this formation. I thought we were playing football. Yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> Receivers running routes, how about it? Yeah, it looked like you went with a not quite a mighty Ducks formation, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Starting everyone from the baseline. I know. I know. 440 now left to go. 69-62. They dart free. And here comes Alma on the takeaway, the drive, and the finish by Walker. Nice trap on Jolly there. If you want to stop him, you're going to have to put two people on him. Unable to find the extra man to pass to. It cuts the lead down to five. And you can see the Scotch being a little bit more aggressive. And they almost got Jolly again as he's finally able to get out of the trap. Nice pass. Oh, indeed a nice pass. That was no look there from Ryan Jolly. Absolutely, he's able to dump it off to Dean on the other side. Piedmont will play Methodist next Saturday. Alma will play Ohio, Ohio Northern also next Saturday. A level win right here. Here comes a three. No good, though. Fight for the rebound. The ball is on the ground. It's going to be a jump ball. And it, well, one of the referees ruled it a jump ball. And they're going to give the possession to Piedmont. Looks like Dean was fighting for it. Was leading it by seven. You saw Hellebrook also crash to the floor to try to get that ball. There's no reared into inbound. They left Dean open right there. Absolutely, and he's going to try to take his time on this one, set up the offense, try to run a play, and especially burn some time on this clock because you have 344 left in counting. Especially knowing that this is a three-possession game up by seven. Absolutely. Floater inside. That one's good. Fisher Darden, and it makes it a nine-point game. You see Darden not having the most efficient night, but definitely getting some key points here in the later goings. Scott's going to come away with some points right here. Slicing through the defense, but too strong. It's Walker. Fight for the rebound. Gets it right back. Tries again. Gets it again. And a foul inside. Yep, and if you say tr try once, you're going to try and try again. And eventually, Tyshawn Walker is able to get the foul. So now he will go to the free throw line. Currently this season, 68% from the free throw line. And Dominic, these points are important here if Alma wants to mount a comeback. Absolutely. Another thing to note, third foul on Hellenbrook. Mm. It would be huge for them to get him into foul trouble. And Hellenbrook was in foul trouble in their loss to Wheaton, but it really didn't matter given how the line dropped so much, but might play a factor here. This one's still a three-possession game. Alma's still very much in it. 
and they're going to have to start hitting some threes down the stretch. So it cuts the lead down to eight. Under 3.15 left to go here in the Leaf One Classic. What a matchup we've had. And so far we see Dean again trying to control. But it looks like we're going to get a foul that goes against Connor Riley as he was grabbing Dean. Hmm, interesting foul with three minutes left. You know, it's going to result in shots. I don't know if I like that foul. So you still have 3.10 left to go. You're not quite in mandatory foul trouble or foul time yet, but... Both teams are in the bonus. They'll be one and one from here. Dean comes up short, air balls the free throw. Well, I guess uh, Riley knew who he was fouling on that one. <laughs> Dean so far tonight, one for two, or believe it'll be now one from three from the line, and that's one of the shots you're gonna need to make. He gave you an opportunity, and now Alma gets the ball back. He made his first career start against Warren Wilson, had 16 points in that ball game, shot 68% from true sh on true shooting. Yeah, Mel was gonna have to start to move quickly here, start to pick up some good points. Let's see if Walker can make it, that one's no good. Another fight for the rebound and another foul. And that's a great second chance opportunity there by number three, Daquan Powell. Yep, Daquan Powell. I believe first time we're calling his name. And I think Powell should deserve a lot of credit because that's just a hustle play, grabbing those boards off the shot. Lily, it's going to be a one and one here. Huge for him to make this first shot. Can't leave points on the board. Walker, 13 of 19. Shooting free throws. Oof. And, oh my. Did you see another air ball? Second air ball in a row. I've never seen two straight free throws being air balled. Ooh, and then we almost got the steal there. Right, Ryan was able to get it. Good pass, Hellenbrook has it. They go Ooh, nice inside. Pass inside. Carter Johnson got stripped, balls out, and it will stay with Piedmont. And that's a good play there from Alma. Able to strip that ball, prevent him from going up. And it'll be a timeout taken on the, on the court by Coach Neely. 73 to 65 with 2.46 left to go. And Dominic, what do you think both coaches are telling their teams right now? Well, I think if you're on the Alma side, I think they're going to have to go a little up-tempo. So they're probably going to want to keep on trying. They've been going to the three. You're going to eventually need some of those to hit. And I love how they're crashing on the inside, getting those opportunities with fouls, but they haven't been hitting their free throws. And then from the Piedmont side, you're definitely going to want to try to eat some clock. At some point, you're probably going to get into the foul game. So free throws for both of these teams are going to be very key coming down the stretch. And I think from the Piedmont side, one of the big things is good ball movement, making sure that you're getting the ball into the hands of guys like Jolly so that when you get sent to the line, they're able to hit their free throws. What a game it's been for Ryan Jolly, 28 points, 9 of 13 shooting, 5 of 6 from downtown and 4 wow. dishes to his other teammates. I mean, if you look at his overall numbers, he's coming in this game. Well, last season he averaged 16.4 16 points and then his first three games scored 33 against Emory, 23 against Warren Wilson, and then 22 against Wheaton. So he's pretty much the primary scorer for the Lions. Absolutely, and he's made his presence feel known at this tournament so far. And while he's been the main driver, there have been guys like Hellebrook and Leish, as well as Neville, who have really been some of the key contributors to this team. While a lot of those guys aren't quite in double figures, a lot of them are nine or eight. Reardon inbound pass to Hellenbrook, and it looks like a reach and foul going against a believe, Daquan Powell. Looks like Riley thought he was close to getting the steal here. Unfortunately, unable to corral it, and they get the foul. And so now it will send Hellenbrook to the free throw line. 73% last year, 24-33 from the charity stripe. Again, hitting your free throws here is going to be key. It's a one and one. That one's no good. Mm. See, Alma now has a chance to run the floor, try to get some quick points. 2.36 left to go. Here's Connor Riley. They're playing some sort of zone. Yeah, but it seems like they've moved into the 3-2 zone. Here's Daquan Powell just putting Ooh. up a shot. That one out of bounds as it goes off of Fisher Darden. And I don't love that shot. It looked like they were trying to 
just find something, anything to go up. But even though you don't have as much time left, you can still look for a good shot. They just checked into the ball game, Donovan Collins, who was really hot in the first half, but quiet in the second. You see, I would have liked to see Bordeaux maybe try to take that shot, but now they're having trouble breaking this zone. And now a three-pointer. Oh, and he got fouled. And he got fouled, and that's from the three-point line. And that's going to be another foul there on Hellebrook. Now earlier, how, you know how I was talking about hitting your free throws? Now you're really going to need to hit your free throws. Especially with 2.09 left to go. Not as many opportunities, not as many possessions with this little time left. Yeah, and you have the opportunity here to make it a two-possession game here. So you don't have to foul after this one. You can go play defense, but you need to hit these free throws. And for Bordeaux, he'll take three free throws because he was fouled from the three-point line. But as you said, you got to make your free throws. Yeah, absolutely. That one rimming in and out. So let's see if he can capitalize on the next two. And the person who fouled Bordeaux was Hellenbrook. He has five fouls. He's out of the game. Yep, and that's going to be big. Let's see if they... I feel like if I were Alma, I would bring in Meister. Or Meister's already on the floor, so we'll try to see if you can dump it off to him for some quick twos. Hellenbrook finishes the game 13 points, 9 boards, so just one shy of a double-double. Not exactly sure what the ruling was. We'll check the replay. Let's see who that went off of. Yeah, I believe that was going to be off of Meister, so the ball will stay with Piedmont. Reardon to inbound. Here's now Ryan Jolly. Paired up against Daquan Powell. Under two minutes now left to go here in the Lee Fun Nice Classic. defense here from Powell so far. Jolly almost lost the ball. Passes it inside the floater. It's good. Fisher Darden, another field goal for him. It's a huge shot there from Jarden, keeping Alma outside. It's an eight-point game now. Here's Walker. Oh, what a nice move to wow. Sean Walker. And the quick timeout as it is now a six-point game. Originally, I thought that extra move was, was unnecessary, but he's able to make the shot. And what a very pretty play, play there using the right hand. And now that it is a six-point game, I'm assuming that if you're Coach Fitzpatrick of the Scots, you're emphasizing, hey, we got to, I mean, at some point you have to foul, right? Absolutely. I think we're starting to get to that point with a minute 30 left because with, a, with down a minute, you're not going to want to sit there and not foul. Mm -hmm. So I think you want to start playing the foul game at this point, but on the other end, you're going to need to try to find the right person to foul. So far, we've seen some difficulty from uh, shooting, especially someone like Dean. You're, if you see Dean get the ball, foul him immediately, um, as he hasn't been as good from the free throw line, one for three so far. The main person you really don't want to foul is going to be Ryan Jolly. Oh, indeed, and for Bowman, he for the Scots, he has four personal fouls, so one more and he's gone. I'm pretty sure on the offensive side, if you're, you are the Scots, you're emphasizing, hey, do you take three corners or try to work it inside the paint? I think at this point, you're going to want to work it inside the paint. I think you have the opportunity to go get some quick twos, especially because you have the size advantage of Meister against Carter Johnson. But while Carter Johnson's definitely a more physical player, I think you can still get some easy twos in there, especially with Hellenbrook out of the game. Donovan Collins, Connor Riley. We're in the game. And look at this, another football formation. Absolutely. They're going to send them all deep. And they will pass it. It's like they're not going to foul immediately. Trying it's to get the steal. Oh, and they, they almost got it. And now they have numbers, and Johnson's going to try to take it all the way. And it looks like a foul on the way up. And it should send Carter Johnson to the free throw line. Absolutely interested to see how Carter Johnson shoots from the free throw line. And again, at this point of the game, I don't mind the foul. Although this one won't be a one and one. And I believe we're bonus on both sides. Yeah, double bonus for both teams. These are the first free throw attempts for Carter Johnson. Got to sink them to pull ahead. And there you go. Hitting your free throws is going to be the key to sealing this game here if you're Piedmont. So we see Meister come back in as everyone's going to drop back on defense for Piedmont. It's Saquon Powell who checks out for Alma. Trying to make this an eight-point ball game. And he does. 
It's now a three possession game. Now if you're Riley, you're, you're going to have to go. You're going to have to move, try to get a quick two or the three. That's a deep triple. That one will not fall. Uh. Defensive rebound gathered in. And that one is going to be Piedmont ball. Yeah, I don't love the shot there. I know he was left open, but you could have taken a few more steps to try to make that a little bit more reasonable of a shot. So now I'm assuming here with a minute 14 left, you have to foul. Yeah, Scott. I think at this point you definitely have to foul. I think even if you end up fouling Jolly, it seems like they're going to put two players on Jolly. As, as it looks like Piedmont, Coach Greg Neely is going to want to talk this one over. We a timeout with a minute 14 left to go. And and if I had to give the MVP trophy of the Lee Fun Classic, I honestly would give it to Ryan Jolly after the last two performances he's had. Absolutely, 28 points. If he goes to the line, he'll have the opportunity to get more. And I feel like, he, especially with Piedmont securing the victory, you're looking for one of the best, best players on the team who wins, and Jolly seems to be the obvious choice. And against Wheaton, he had 22.7 rebounds, five assists, shot 10 of, 10, 10 of 17 from the field, five steals, 62% true shooting. And the graduate has just made so many great plays in this term in the last two days. Absolutely. What a performance we've seen from Ryan Jolly. Not just as a scorer, as a distributor. Five assists as well on the night. Five for six from three. And so just great overall all-around play. Piedmont looking to improve to three and one on their young season. I'm surprised they're not fouling. They're trying yeah, to go for the steal. Choice. And they almost had it, but seems like now you have the opportunity to... Oh, what are oh. they going to call here? Piedmont thinks they have it. I believe it's going to stay with Piedmont. And yep, it will. They were debating about calling, I believe, in over, over and back 10 seconds. Yep, and this one's going to stay with Piedmont. Missed opportunity, and I feel like at this point, you definitely have to foul. Can't waste any time. Yeah, I'm surprised they actually tried to go for the trap or the steal. Wasted some time. And he goes out of bounds, but it's going to be a blocking foul. Yep, and I know Riley is disappointed in that, but you got to foul at this point. I mean, a minute, five seconds left. Get him to the line, stop the clock. So send Fisher Darden to the free throw line. His first free throw attempts. He only tried two last season. And some of these free throws here from Carter Johnson and now from Darden are going to be huge in sealing this game. Josh Elliott as well as Connor Meister checked in for the Scots. Overall 64% shooting from free throw for both of these teams. So now makes it a 10 point ball game. Now you're gonna have to chuck up some threes. Yep, you're gonna have to find quick points trying to get the three and that's that's not gonna help. So it is Ryan Jolly who has the ball and it looks like Alma's not gonna foul. Nope, I think they're gonna play this one out at this point. They note that the writing is on the wall with under 45 seconds left. And then this one, they're going to just try to pass it around, run out the clock. 12 on the shot clock, about 37 seconds left. So far, a great job by Piedmont to keep running the clock. Now here comes a drive, a block, though. Ball's on the ground, two on the shot clock. Alma is able to get it. Yep, and at this point, you're going to need some prayers. That one is going to be air ball, though, for Josh Elliott. Nice attempt to recover there. I think that was number five for Piedmont Collins. <laughs> Tried the, around the back to save it, but it's out and we have the final 20 seconds here, 10 point lead. Some substitutions now in for Alma. Tyshawn Walker back in as well as Daquan Powell. But Piedmont, 20 and a half seconds away from winning the Lee Fun Classic. Absolutely, and what a performance there. We're here by Piedmont. Great game by Ryan Jolly, as we've seen. Looks like we have a blocking foul inside, so this will extend the game for a little bit. Yeah, and we're going to get the foul. I believe that's going to be on number one, Tayshawn Walker. And so we're going to get some more free throws. 
So it sends Griffin Neville now to the free throw line. At this point, some of the free throw shooting down the stretch by Piedmont's really helped seal this game. And it's been one of the differences between these two teams so far. Alma shooting not as well from the free throw line, and especially in situations where it matters. And for Piedmont, they're projected to finish fourth in the CCS, but based on the way that they've played this weekend, I think they can be a serious threat within their conference. Absolutely, and if you get players, other players stepping up alongside Ryan Jolly, they're going to be a very dangerous team. That three by Collins is no good. Ball's loose, and it looks like it's going to be a foul. It goes against Fisher Darden. And this is an opportunity for some, some players to try to send some of their Stats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tyshawn Walker to the free throw line with 6.1 seconds left. Yeah, technically, we are at a 10-point game, but 6.1, that would have to be a miracle of miracles yeah. to try to pull this one out. Indeed. And for Alma, although this is going to be in a losing effort, I mean, a very promising season up ahead for the squad that finished 6-19 and last season. Definitely a great game we saw between these two teams. A lot of good scoring on the early side. Great play by Rowan, Ryan Jolly, 28 points, five assists. What a performance for him, as well as a near double-double with 13 points, nine rebounds from Hellebrook. What a game. And Piedmont wins the Lee Fund Classic, 80 to 71 against the Alma Scots. Alongside Dominic Brown, Ahmed Kong saying so long from Wheaton, Illinois.